Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. You know what I realized the other day? How many of us believe in things that we can't actually do or explain ourselves? Like, for example, like we all know when you take Advil or ibuprofen or whatever painkiller that you have that's over the counter, we know when we take it, it's going to, you know, relieve the headache and it's going to work. But do any of you honestly know how to make that pill or how it's made or explain it for yourself how it works? No, we just pop it in. We all know we landed people on the moon, but how many of us could actually do the math to explain it? How many of us could actually be an astronaut? And don't worry, I'm not one of these wackos that doesn't believe in the moon landing. I'm just saying the point being, it's either dumb faith or arrogance that we just sit around and say, yeah, this isn't true, or that's that's true, or we all know that happened, or that didn't happen, even though many of us haven't done it ourselves, and honestly, couldn't even explain it if we wanted to. This is one of the many reasons why I called my show Out of My League. There's only really so much I can tell you before it turns into bullshit. And there's no better example of this than people complaining about Brian Kelly not doing enough press conferences because he's not doing his job. Why doesn't he speak? He should speak more. Brian Kelly needs to represent the program immediately and often. And, like any CEO... Brian Kelly today comes out and one of the first things he says on his press conference is, quote, putting together a staff is not about hiring and immediately getting them in front of the media. We needed to spend a little time together. We needed to get a chance to know each other because seven of the 10 coaches are new guys that Brian Kelly has never worked with before. You see, unlike the last two LSU football coaches, Brian Kelly was trying to think before he opened his mouth. What is the strategy uh, for defense? Well, we need to talk about that a little bit more. What's the specific responsibility for the defensive uh, coordinator versus the run game coordinator? Well, we don't exactly know, but, uh, you know, we, we've got some ideas. All of those questions, unlike previous coaches, were clearly and simply answered today at the press conference. And if not to throw shade at people even more, Brian Kelly just casually acknowledged that, you you know what, this is, you know, the fifth time I've done this in my career, so, you know, uh, I'm used to this and that and looking for this. In other words, Brian Kelly can actually explain and do the job that dumbasses like me talk about for a living. Imagine, if you would, the second winningest active head coach in college football actually knows what he's doing. All right, I'm off my soapbox. But... We are still getting to know Brian Kelly as a coach because, look, this is, again, the only second only second press conference he's had. But I've noticed that so far in the only two press conferences, Brian Kelly, he goes into every presser with a very specific theme. He goes in with buzzwords. Now, his opening press presser was, what was the buzzword? Alignment. He kept on saying alignment like every you know, every other sentence. And basically, he was explaining why he left Notre Dame for LSU. But in today's press conference, Brian Kelly, he gave us a real treat. Not one, not two, but three buzzwords. They were versatility, communication, and experience. He described his new staff in those ways. That's what they needed to have. They needed to have versatility, communication, and experience. So the experience thing... Okay, that's something that seems obvious to most. Obvious to everyone except Ed Ogeron last year. But the versatility and communication part, well, that stood out. So there's an old saying, and that saying usually comes from coaches, that the best coaches adapt their system to the players, not their players to the system. And another word for adapt is versatility. Not, well, we have to run a 4-3 defense because yo, 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 yo. We're going to run this offense because Pete Carroll told me to. No, we want coaches who can adapt to every single situation. So to those asking what Matt House will run, what defensive scheme he'll run, well, it kind of just depends on the players they work with during spring. Everyone keeps on asking, what is the defense? What is the offense? See, I think LSU fans are so obsessed with that because they're used to having this question answered in a very specific way. Because the last two head coaches for LSU have been lackluster and really kind of behind the times schematically. 
or organizationally. So most of LSU fans don't really realize that this is just what college football is now. It's it's never just one thing. It's a multitude of schemes. It's a multitude of philosophy. Now with the communication part of hiring these coaches, this really stood out to me. Because after Matt House, the new DC, answered a few questions, I kind of wrote down and said, well, every answer he gave is just very short, sweet, simple, and to the point. Hey, Coach, what's our base defense going to be? Well, we don't know our base defensive front yet because we haven't had practice with them. Next question. What do you like about uh, coaching with Brian Kelly? He empowers me to do my job. Next question. Why did you want to come back to college? Well, I wanted to be a coordinator again because I enjoy calling plays. Next question. No bullshit. All business and to the point. Part of being a great communicator is simple communication. The simplest message often gets across the fastest. And that was pretty obvious in listening to the new coaches. Now, they did speak with the special teams recruiting coordinator, Brian Polian, whose dad, by the way, is Hall of Fame general manager, Bill Polian. And he rambled on at first. He thanked Notre Dame. He talked about settling into Louisiana as a recruiter, getting to know the community, the restaurants, the fan base, wah, 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 all that stuff. But being the recruiting coordinator, he was asked about the transfer portal. And he basically said, look, it's a quick fix. It's not a long-term solution, which is what Brian Kelly said uh, during the bowl game when he was being interviewed up in the booth. And then he went out, and he, I, I, credit to Brian Polian for saying this, but he went out and pretty much said, hey, let's call it what it is. This is free agency. You know, Brian Polian also said, because this was like free agency, he said he asked his dad, the Hall of Fame general manager, for advice on how he approached free agency in the NFL. Because, look, it's NIL deals in the portal, people getting offered stuff under under the table. There's tampering involved. Some of them just go to the highest bidder on the best team. Some of them go to the teams that uh, can give them the most money but also run the type of system that fits them. You know, how do you use certain amount of players without overdoing it? Because in free agency, historically in the NFL, it doesn't usually work all that often if you don't know what you're doing and you're not doing it the right way. It's a completely different model now in college football. Now, I've seen the interviews and coaching clinics with most of these coaches beforehand, so this isn't the first time I've heard them speak, especially the offensive coaches, which we'll hear tomorrow. But one of the things I noticed is that Brian Polian, uh, he's very different than most of the other coaches on this staff as far as personality. Uh, he's not as businesslike, straight to the point, no bullshit type of, type of guy like, say, Matt House or Brian Kelly, or Jamar Cain. He's more of the fluffy, love you up, we love the community, you know, we love the fans, all that, uh, you know, all, all that nice bullshit to kind of lovey-dovey you up. Well, being the recruiting coordinator, like he was at Notre Dame, following Brian Kelly to LSU, you can kind of see that his purpose on the staff is to kind of compliment Brian Kelly on the recruiting trail. You know, he's the guy who goes in, he loves up the mom, the dad, the grandma, the grandpa, whoever's taking care of the kid, the coaches. You know, he kind of makes you feel safe and comfortable and nice. And then Brian Kelly comes in, and he's more of your traditional military A, B, C, and D recruiter. Here's reasons A, B, C, and D, why you need to come to LSU. No bullshit. So even something that's different than Brian Kelly, he still compliments Brian Kelly. Now tomorrow, we get to meet the offensive staff. But something tells me that the personalities and the messages probably won't be so different. And that is a reflection of Brian Kelly. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.